what happens in VDJ recombination is um, there is going to be recombination to bring a D segment next to a J segment and a V next to a DJ segment. So we're going to show that. And of course, all these segments, there are many other D segments and many other J segments and many other V segments. We're just going to talk about the chosen ones and use hatch marks here to indicate that there's some indeterminate amount of space between these segments that I've drawn. There are two kinds of recombination signal sequences which are denoted in blue here and red. And each of those recombination signal sequences um, is really DNA sequence denoted by a triangle. So in the red, let's say, that really stands for the following type of sequence. That there are two conserved sequences represented by the red, and one is a sevenmer, a seven nucleotide, seven base pair sequence, and one is a nine nucleotide sequence, and they're separated by a spacer. And in the red, for example, that spacer could be 12 nucleotides, all right? 12 nucleotide spacer. And then the blue segment is exactly like the red segment with one exception. It also has a sevenmer and a nine-mer or nonimer or heptamer and nonimer separated by a spacer. But that spacer is different. That spacer is uh, 23 base pairs long. So I'll put a 23 there. And so this thing, these things are called recombination signal sequence dash 23 and recombination signal sequence dash 12 to indicate the difference is only in the spacers. And VDJ recombination always occurs between a, a RSS 23 and an RSS 12. So that's the 12-23 rule. The reason for that rule is that the first, the first mobile element to hop in to the vertebrate genome I'm going to show you that, say, say this, was, this was the original mobile element. And remember, the mobile element hopped in, and any mobile element hopped in can also hop out. And so this particular mo mobile element hops out, and it came in with one RSS12 and one RSS23. And it hops out in the same way. It excises itself because RAG1 and RAG2, for example, encode um, an integrase that's also um, uh, a disintegrase that allows it to hop out. So let me erase this bracket just to show you that when, when this thing hops out, RAG1 and RAG2 will do a cleavage at two points. All right. And that cleavage at the two points leads um, to four different ends from two different double strand cuts. And those four ends now have to be rejoined. So let me sort of show a blow up of one of those two of, of those cuts. So here's a blow up of the cut. It's going to be a little bit. All right. And I'm just going to separate the DNA there to show the cut. Okay, there's the cut there. And there is going to be a cut here. And the cut is going to be there. And now I'm going to draw for you the new cut over here. So there's a cut at these two locations that, that occurred with the cleavage. And now we've got ends um, that are free, uh, uh, four different ends that have been created by the cleavage event. And what happens now is that the non-homologous and joining proteins, I'll, I'll draw an arrow here for you, the non-homologous and joining proteins will take these ends and join them in a way that recombines the genome. And, and, the reason, and they're going to only join them in a particular order. They're going to take the J segment and the D segment and join them and the two recombination signal sequence ends and join them. 
And the reason it's going to do it that way is because RAG1 and RAG2, after making the cleavage, end up bound to the recombination signal sequences to prevent the joining of those two ends for a little bit, to delay the joining, so that the only two ends that can be joined are D to J. So as a result of that joining event, you get the following. You get the D segment joined to the J segment. Okay? And then, of course, the DNA extends out here and the DNA extends out here. And the rest of the genome is upstream. So let's put that in there. And here's the upstream V region, ready for recombination. And at the same time, this, this, the DNA that's been excised uh, from the genome uh, containing the two recombination signal sequences now becomes available for joining. And the two ends there are joined in the following way, so that the blue segment and the red segment get joined, so that you get a junction like this. So the excision comes out as a circle. Um, and in the absence of non homogeneous joining, of course, the excision looks like uh, excision of a, a mobile element, but because non homogeneous joining is out there cleaning up the ends, it'll just take the ex excised um, segment and join the two ends. So you have two pieces of DNA. You have the intact chromosome, uh, which I'll designate here. And you have a circle. And the chromosome is now the immunoglobulin heavy chain after D to J joining has occurred. And what happens next, of course, is V to DJ joining. And you just go through the whole thing all over again. So that is a quick overview of the mechanism of VDJ recombination. Thank you.